Have you ever walked through a farmer's market, seen those incredible pyramids of perfect vibrant peppers and thought to yourself, how do they do that? Maybe you've even tried growing them, investing a whole season of effort, only to be rewarded with a few small, somewhat sad-looking fruits. It can feel disheartening like there's some secret club you're not a part of. What if I told you that the difference between that disappointing harvest and an explosive one isn't magic? It isn't some guarded secret, it's science. More than that, it's a protocol, a series of simple deliberate steps grounded in understanding what a plant actually wants, and it's a protocol that anyone can master. My name is Alex, and for the next 10 minutes, I want to pull back the curtain. We're going to move beyond the simple act of putting a seed in the ground. We're going to learn to decode the language of the pepper plant, to understand its signals, and respond in a way that unlocks its full genetic potential. By the end of our time together, you will have the ultimate blueprint to grow the most productive, healthy, and delicious peppers of your life. So let's get our hands dirty. Every great structure, whether it's a skyscraper or a simple garden, begins with a solid foundation. For our peppers, that foundation is built on two core pillars, the genetic code locked within the seed and the home we provide for it, the soil. Let's talk about genetics first. It's easy to overlook the seed packet, but this is your first and perhaps most important decision. Don't just grab any packet off the rack. Think like an engineer for a moment. What is your end goal? Are you dreaming of sweet, crisp bell peppers for summer salads, or are you after the fiery, complex heat of a habanero for a homemade hot sauce? Your choice of seed dictates the journey. I strongly recommend looking for F1 hybrids. These aren't genetically modified. They're actually the result of meticulous crossbreeding by experts to select for the best traits, vigor, high yields, and crucially, resistance to common diseases. Think of it as your first and best insurance policy for a successful season. Once you have your chosen seeds, we can give them a VIP head start. Here's a professional tip to supercharge germination, a warm soak. Simply drop your seeds into a glass of slightly warm water, not hot, just pleasant to the touch, and let them sit for about 8 to 12 hours. This simple bath softens the hard outer seed coat and sends a clear message to the dormant embryo inside. It's safe. It's time to wake up. After their soak, transfer them to a damp paper towel folded over, seal it in a plastic bag to maintain humidity, and place it somewhere consistently warm. On top of a refrigerator often works perfectly. In just a few days you'll see tiny white tails, the first roots, begin to emerge. This method is brilliant because it guarantees you're only planting viable seeds that are ready and eager to grow. Now for the second pillar of our foundation, and arguably the most critical, the soil architecture. If there is one thing pepper plants despise, it's having wet feet. They are native to well-drained, arid regions. Soggy, compacted soil is a death sentence leading to root rot, the number one killer of homegrown peppers. Your mission is to create a soil environment that is light, airy, and teeming with life. So, my go-to formula for this perfect soil is actually pretty straightforward. I begin with a base of high-quality garden soil or potting mix and then, well, I supercharge it. The First Amendment is a generous helping of well-rotted compost. Think of this as the soil's five-star restaurant, a slow-release buffet of complex nutrients and beneficial microbes. Next, I add perlite. These little white specks of expanded volcanic glass are honestly miracle workers. They act as permanent air tunnels within the soil, creating pockets for oxygen and making sure that excess water drains away freely. Finally, I mix in coco coir. This is a fantastic, sustainable alternative to peat moss, and it's made from coconut husks. It has this unique ability to retain just the right amount of moisture for the roots to drink from, without ever turning into a waterlogged swamp. When you're done, the final texture should feel a lot like a moist, crumbly chocolate cake, rich, light, and just full of potential. 
Whether you're planting in a container or directly in the ground, always build the soil up into a slight mound or raised bed. This simple trick uses gravity to your advantage, making sure water always pulls away from the sensitive crown of the plant. With our foundation firmly in place, we move to what might be the most counterintuitive yet transformative step in the entire process. This next part might feel wrong. It may even feel a little cruel to your beautiful young plant. But I promise you, this is the secret that separates the average gardener from the expert. We are going to prune it. Take a look at a young pepper plant about a foot or 30 centimeters tall. It has a single determined goal to grow straight up towards the sun. This is a biological drive called apical dominance, where all the plant's energy is channeled to the very top growth point. But we don't want a tall, lanky plant that might give us a few peppers at the very top. We want a short, bushy, multi-branched pepper-producing factory. So we intervene. With a pair of clean, sharp pruning snips, we are going to do something called topping. We will decisively snip off the very top of the plant just above a healthy set of leaves. For a moment, the plant enters a state of controlled panic. It realizes its primary growth strategy has been thwarted. It then sends a hormonal signal cascading down its stem to all the dormant side shoots, the tiny buds located in the armpits where each leaf meets the stem. The message is clear, go, go, go. Instead of one main stem, you will now trigger the growth of two, four, or even more strong fruit-bearing branches. You are essentially hacking the plant's hormonal system to build a better, more productive architecture. The second part of this surgical procedure is what I call lollipopping. Okay, so look down at the base of the plant. You'll notice the first few sets of leaves and maybe some tiny weak-looking suckers. These are what we call energy vampires. Since they're shaded by the canopy above, they just can't photosynthesize effectively. Honestly, they contribute very little to the plant's overall energy budget, but they still end up consuming water and nutrients. Even worse, these energy vampires crowd the base, blocking airflow and creating this damp, humid environment, which by the way is just a perfect breeding ground for fungal diseases. So, yeah, we remove them. By cleanly snipping off the bottom two or three sets of leaves and any suckers, we're actually achieving two critical goals. First, we redirect all that wasted energy upwards to the production zone. And second, we create a wind tunnel right at the base of the plant, keeping it dry, healthy, and resilient. Topping and lollipopping, it's a really powerful two-part technique that will fundamentally change the shape and output of your harvest. Now that we've built the plant's factory, it's time to fuel it correctly. You wouldn't feed a marathon runner the same diet as a competitive bodybuilder, and the same specialized logic applies to our pepper plants. Their nutritional needs change dramatically. In the early stages, right after we've pruned the plant, its primary job is to build that bushy framework of leaves and stems. The fuel for this vegetative growth is nitrogen. Nitrogen is the primary component of chlorophyll, the green pigment that functions as the plant's solar panels. During this phase, you should feed your plant every two weeks with a balanced, all-purpose fertilizer that is slightly higher in nitrogen. But here's the most critical pivot in the entire process. The moment you see the first delicate white flowers begin to appear, you must change the diet. This is a signal that the plant is shifting from its growth phase to its reproductive phase. If you continue to feed it high nitrogen fertilizer, you will be encouraging it to keep building leaves you'll end up with a gorgeous, giant, lush green bush with almost no peppers. The plant is simply too comfortable in its growth mode to feel the urgency to produce fruit. Instead, the moment you see those flowers, you switch to what's often called a bloom fertilizer. This formula is intentionally low in nitrogen but high in the other two macronutrients, phosphorus and potassium. Phosphorus is the key that unlocks flower formation and fruit development. Potassium acts like the plant's internal circulatory system manager, regulating water and nutrient transport. 
It's essential for developing large, juicy, flavorful peppers. This single strategic change in diet is the trigger. It's the signal that tells the plant, stop building the factory and start running the production line. And after all of that care, that strategy, that understanding, you get the reward. You'll see a plant that isn't just surviving, but truly thriving. A plant with a strong, open architecture, with clusters of fruit hanging like jewels, each one accessible to the sun. Even harvesting becomes a strategy. Don't wait for peppers to get old and shriveled on the vine. The moment they reach their full, rich, uniform color and have a glossy sheen, they are at their peak. Harvesting them regularly and promptly does more than just give you food. It sends another powerful hormonal signal back to the plant. The mission to reproduce is not yet complete. Make more. You are essentially encouraging a continuous cycle of production. And when you harvest, always use clean snips or scissors. Pulling the fruit by hand can easily tear or damage the delicate branches where the next wave of flowers is already beginning to form. Treat the plant with respect, even in harvest, and it will continue to reward you all season long. So, let's bring it all together. The code we've cracked today isn't about one single trick, it's about an integrated system, a protocol. Let's recap the three golden rules for an explosive pepper harvest. First, build a superior foundation. This means starting with great genetics from quality seeds and engineering a soil that is light, rich, and drains perfectly. Second, prune with purpose. Don't be afraid to top your young plants to force a bushy, multi-stemmed structure and keep the base clean to improve airflow and direct energy where it counts. And third, feed strategically. Fuel the initial growth with nitrogen but pivot decisively to a phosphorus and potassium-rich diet the moment you see flowers. This is more than just a guide to growing peppers, it's a lesson in understanding a living system. It's about learning to work with the fundamental principles of nature, rather than against them, to create astounding abundance. The power to grow incredible, nutrient-dense food is right there in your hands. You have the blueprint now. So I want to challenge you. Don't just let this be interesting information, let it be a call to action. Get one plant this season, just one, and apply this protocol. See the difference for yourself. If this guide has been valuable to you, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel for more deep dives into the science of the garden. But more importantly, I want to hear from you. I want to see your results. Share your photos, your successes, and your questions in the comments below. Let's build a community of empowered, knowledgeable growers together.